Uh, all right, Matt, I'm going to give you a little choose your own adventure here. Where we, right. uh, I'm going to give you a list of names. You tell me where you want to go. We could talk Darius Slayton, Nicole Hardman, DK Metcalf, Hunter Renfro. We can go out to the desert and talk Andy Isabella, Hakeem Nix. Um, any of those Hakeem names Butler. jump out Butler. to you? Butler. Yeah, uh, Hakeem. Yeah, he, not, he, Hakeem. Wishes, he wishes. He wishes. <laughs> <the comeback, man. laughs> let's let's talk. Let's talk Metcalf. I okay. mean, let's just, let's go with the biggest name. All right, let's go. Let's go to Seattle. Let's talk DK Metcalf. Obviously, your your boy Tyler Lockett busted out in a big way. Opposite. Uh, what are we doing with Seattle? Is this is this the offense is like their OC going to finally realize that they have two stud receivers, talent at the tight end position, and not run into the pile every play? Yeah, I mean, I think that Seattle has potential to have a top five wide receiver duo right here mm-hmm. on its hands. I mean, when you look at obviously Tampa Bay, they've got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, of course. The Bills, like we talked about up top, John Brown, Stefan Diggs, I think they're in the conversation. Of course, the Falcons duo, Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, those guys are two two great players in their own right, absolutely. I think that when you look at who's after that, you've got to start considering Lockett and Metcalf. You guys know how big of a fan I am of Tyler Lockett. I think he is he's become a true number one receiver, a coverage dictating guy that people have to take account for on every play and has – really blossomed into the player that I was telling you since 2016. You're going to be a little bit patient with me on this one. But with with DK Metcalf, I think he was a, a lot of what we expected if you were high on him. I mean, because there were some people that just thought he absolutely was couldn't play uh, and wasn't going to be successful in the NFL. But, I, I mean, I, like, I liked Metcalf a lot for what he was, and that was pretty much what he was as a rookie. Seattle did a good job of keeping his route assignments pretty simple. Over 50% of his charted routes and reception perception were either a slant or nine route. I mean, <laughs> that is an absurdly constricted route tree. However, Metcalf showed that he could not only dominate on those two patterns, he had one of the best success rate on slant route scores in the entire history of reception perception. He also finished at the 85th percentile in success rate versus man coverage overall. So you saw him separate well on the curl, the out, the dig, the comeback – a variety of different scores, and he was really good against press coverage. I mentioned that top 35 adjusted success rate versus press coverage score, and I only say adjusted because cut the minimum threshold for guys who see an above-average rate of man coverage. Metcalf is on that list as a rookie. I I think that he can become – this was my take coming into the NFL, and it's even more so my take now based on how similar the reception perceptions are. I think that DK Metcalf could become a Des Bryant type of player if he hits his highest range of outcomes yeah throw up that x brian that's what i'm talking about i mean i think these i think those guys are just so similar i thought that yeah. watching them in college and I, I definitely thought so after watching him in the nfl because des was awesome in some of these success rate versus man coverage success rate versus press coverage metrics but nobody was ever going to call him you know the most refined or detailed route runner he's just yeah. a, a awesome getting off the line of scrimmage and was just a physical freak, and I think Metcalf is the same player. What you're really hoping for in fantasy and just those of us who believe in people doing sane things, (laughs) uh, those of us out there who are wearing our masks, folks, we also believe believe in another thing that that some sane people should do. It's not even just that we want Seattle to pass the ball more or to become – you know, one of the most aggressive aerial attacks in the NFL. That's just probably not going to happen, but – I think there's a chance that just like we saw Evans and Godwin split the targets at almost 50, like 50% of the passing targets Mm -hmm. in Tampa Bay last year. I think there's a chance that Metcalf and Lockett could be a 45%, 50% group here because Greg Olson and, and a couple of question marks at tight end, Nothing really going on beyond these two guys at wide receiver, and none of their pass their, their running backs are all that great as pass catchers. So I think that's your hope if both of these players are going to hit in fantasy. Yeah, and uh, I get, yeah, we're we're wanting a Minnesota situation. We want Stefan yes. Diggs, to Adam Thielen, yep. and if we can Good get call. that out of these two guys, I think yeah, they'll both be incredibly valuable. And uh, Brian, I didn't have high expectations for DK. I was I was not. Uh, my computer just turned off. Cool. That's cool. My computer. My, my computer decided it was done for a minute. Uh, <laughs> we're still going. Anyway, we're still seeing. We're still, we're still here. Uh, yeah. So I, I didn't have high expectations for him coming out. I thought this was a guy that wasn't was you know a you know uh, a straight line runner. That's all he could do. There wasn't going to be much to his game, and I think he fits in really well. And I think Russell Wilson's ability to extend plays and, and put the ball in 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 the right spot 
really help DK, you know, have a little bit of easier transition. And if he takes another step in year two, this might, you know, a Des Bryant comp, I think, it, I don't think it's as crazy as some might think it might be. It, it, just like you guys said, it, if he turns into Des Bryant down in the red zone where he's just bodying up fools and, you know, backing him down it, it, in the end zone like Shaq used to do. I mean, where he could he could approach, you know, 12, 13 touchdowns just with his size down there. And uh, I'm with you, Kyle. I, coming into the NFL, I was a little worried about Metcalf's lateral agility. You know, I looked a little bit too much into those cone drills and all that stuff and <laughs> didn't not. really just – yeah, didn't really just look at like how skilled he was at going up and getting the ball and just how effective his size is down the field against against smaller DBs and stuff like that. And, you know, it doesn't hurt that he's got a guy in Russell Wilson who's probably one of the most efficient passers we've seen over the last 10 years. So, you know, he's a, he's a guy that I am so happy to hear Matt talk up as I, I snagged him in a dynasty league for the third pick in the first round this year. So hopefully – uh, he's he, he comes to fruition and turns out that top 10, top 15 wide receiver thing this year. Yeah, no, and I, I think that uh, that makes a ton of sense.